All right, laying her in here. I'm gonna go over a little, um, a little bit of this book called uh, the Complete Armanon and the Untold Story. Mostly is like a series of questions for Seven Serpents, who is, uh, who, who knows about the Armanon a lot. Um, so I want to know if some of this stuff is valid or not. Um, it talks about Siegfried Adolf Kruber. Uh, where knowledge is the great knowledge of the cosmic energies, the recognition of hidden energies of nature, subtle heavenly as well as earthly streams. So it talks about him. Talks about the lap, or is it the lago rune? Life, law of life. I don't know why it would mean liver. Um, sea, laughter, lake. Is why laughter though? <laughs> um, the man rune. Higher cells, man. Uh, at the last, very last line at the bottom, it mentions Manus is the mystical tribal father of the German. And that's what I associate it with mostly. And the German leader who stems from Manus, from the spirit of God himself. Um, the language that you, the book uses is kind of weird. Uh, the Ehrin, the Eret marriage room. Elder Futhark, it's uh, I was. Eternal, true procreation, the law of nature, which is fulfilled between man and wife, the two selves, two selves, two lives, which by pure love bind together themselves in marriage. That's interesting that it says that, because in the Elder Futhark, it's after Tiwaz and Burkana, the sky father and uh, the tree earth mother pair, and what's after Ewaz, this marriage room is Manaz, the first, the first Aryan man. Uh, so that seems to check out, I guess. Uh, this is just rune formulas: Suf or Fus produces tiredness. Uh, Sof or Fos produces forgetfulness. Formula Sigtir produces uh, works positively. Positively, positively, brings victory, happiness, strengthens the life force. Alu affects the defense, banning the enemy. It's not just that. Here's like a word. Arahari gives solar force and affects protection against all dark power powers. I guess I don't know. Ara, I think that's the what the eagle. Hari, I don't remember. Um, does it, oh, it doesn't say. Uh, oh, uh, flu Ulf produces cosmic love. Sorry, the picture's kind of not that great. <laughs> um, Uste produces a feeling of hope, the power of desire. Oh, wisdom, I'm not sure why. Uh, one thing I thought was interesting was this SSGG thing. In ancient times, this formula was called String Stone Grass Grown. Strick Stein Grass Grain. And indicated jurisdiction, secret, accusation, and judgment. Kind of interesting, I guess. These formulas may be an, as inspiration. Further ones can be drawn from the runic futhork. Sensitive runers uh, looking with astral vision by means of the runes see with an abstract clarity, but they must first clarify that which they see for themselves. Whether they see pictures or symbols or sense or hear things. 
Alright, so it's it's got a lot of like uh mystical language. At the bottom close to the bottom, three lines up. Dear blood brother, guard yourself against the way into the depths. It is easier, more inviting, but also more devilish because it brings you destruction. Uh what? <laughs> Many a man went to work some years ago with the best of intentions, but their animalistic, egotistic drives got the best of them or something. Hmm. Uh, something like that. Oh, uh, here's Hagal. The rune Hagal is hieroglyphic, which means fully script wise, the all hag, which. Which um, caringly surrounds everything, the universe, and then mentions Allah. What the hell? Wal, Hall, oh, as in Valhu, the God All, the One All, the Man All. Uh, okay. Also called Hagal, represented by the tipped rune, it signifies death, destruction. Besides that, air, wind. Does it? Does it signify death? I'm not I mean, part of it might be because of the rune poem. Uh, not necessarily this one. They're not necessarily the one from the Havamal, though. But the other one that mentions hail coming down and destroying the crop and then turning into water and contributing to uh, the next crop. Uh, the root, the hub in the middle. To me, it represents uh, Ginnon Gagap, it seems like, or the seed within Ginnon Gagap. And I think it, one of these pages says that. Uh oh. Uh, let's see, let's see. The Hagal rune consists of the Is rune, the Isa rune. And the uh, X, so that's the Giba room. The cross of wedding. Isa Gibo, which means that the self, the human being, is married to the world. What? I'm not so sure about that. As ornament. Orna oh, yeah, like us giving, individual giving and taking. Uh, to and from the uh, cosmos? I guess. Uh, this anchor is also called the man, the little man. I don't know. A bunch of random stuff to me. Alright. Oh, this is something weird. The workmasters of the world, the father of Jesus, of the asses of the Christ, was a carpenter like the father of the Indian Christ, Krishna. Therefore, he belonged to the guild of the divine builders of the world, who made the scaffolding, Gerist, in dialect, Gerist, which means the Christ. For the, like, what the hell is that? <laughs> For the building of the... That sounds so Freemasonic. Like, extremely, extremely Freemasonic. Whoever wonders about this de deduction does not consider that all concepts and meanings can be found in the German language. Because uh, it's nearest to the Aryan Ur language. Um, yeah, I don't know, but the first part is weird. Oh, and he mentions from the follow from this follows that the free space masons were always in second place in the art of building mankind and the world. So they realize <laughs> there's a connection there. Huh. And some other weird stuff and Yes, yeah, it's, it's fucking weird. The world tree, oh, the Kaon, Kaon, Ken. The world tree, Yggdrasil. 
uh, serves in the narrow sense as the Aryan tribal tree, beside which the tribal trees of foreign races or species are seen as foreign trees. The runic concept uh, Haun Kuna, made for example in the middle or in the name Adelgunde, demonstrates the feminine principle in the all in the all in a purely sexual sense. So this this is I remember this from the um, Gouda Fon list. They just took it straight from Gouda Fon list. The tribe, the race, or species is to be purely preserved. It may not be defiled by the roots of, of the foreign tree. If it were nevertheless to happen, however, such would be of little use to the foreign trees because its foreign scion would grow to become its raging foe. Your blood, your highest possession. Uh, okay, here's another weird thing. The Earth Father. Our Father, who art in Aether. Gibor is the Hagal of Aether and the Earth. Give us thy spirit and thy power and, ma and matter. And from our scold in harmony with... I mean, it's a, it's a total ripoff of... Uh, of uh, what is it called? The Father's Prayer or whatever? I forget. The, the freaking Christian Prayer. The spirit be ours, also an urd from eternity to eternity. Om, and then amen. We're like, really? What the hell? <laughs> Why? So silly. And then they have Saint Matilda, King Heinrich. Uh, I Maybe somewhere they, they try to say Saint Matilda. Matilda is uh, actually a goddess turned into a saint, which they, the damn Catholic Church did do a lot of. Uh, Saint Yodokus, not surprisingly, has many names, Yost, Yose, and Judge Anak. no idea what that is, to name but a few. Need we say more? Yeah, look at the pictures, look at what he looks like. Just think of what it must have been like to be standing there with those SS officers when for the first time they saw the portrait of this old man, quote unquote, with the crown before his feet. In the church at the Triangle Castle that points north in the land of the Externstein, of Furman, of Holy Van, the land of Teutonic Knights. <laughs> oh, now that is living. That is being right where you're supposed to be. All right. So, yeah, they turn it into like this mystical stuff. But, yeah, it's better just to say certain gods were turning into freaking saints. And then they have a picture of the uh, circle on the floor of the Grand Hall and the golden sun on the ceiling of the lower tomb. That's These are both in the, uh, uh, what is it called again? That castle, Vivelsburg. Mm, I couldn't get that picture quite right. Sorry. Um, let's see, and this one mentions Lucifer. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see, his peace was excommunicated because of it. Oh, let's see. Friedrich made his peace and was excommunicated because of it, but the Ritter Bruder followed their king anyway. The Ritter is German for knight, and Bruder is, of course, brother. By the name of Lucifer's court, I name those of Aryan blood who, faithful to this, blood have chosen as a supreme object in their quest for the divine the, the, the light situated in, in the farthest north and certainly not Mount Sinai in the Middle East Otto Ron which I could have swore I read that Otto Ron betrayed uh, Germany in the end and he wasn't actually one of us Yeah, Lucifer is definitely, that's from Lucian Ferry, that's Latin. It's not from our enemies. But, is it useful? Yeah, that's true, I'm not so sure. I often, oh, this is a, I just added this, this was in the book too. It's from a, or it is the poem on the front, 1915, by a certain quote-unquote failed painter. I often go on bitter nights, to Wotan's Oak in the quiet glade, with veiled powers to weave the union. The moonlight reveals to me the runes, 
and all who are full of impudence during the day are made small by the runic formula. Shells, guns, bayonets have no power over me. I am Wotan and in charge of my own destiny. They draw shining steel, but instead of advancing, they freeze into stalagmites. So the false ones are parted from the true ones. I reach into the ancient nest of words, finding formulas of blessings and prosperity, and give to the pure, the just, and the good. Dang. That sounds like... That sounds amazing. Like he was ins inspired and possessed by Wotan. Okay, this one, I wanted to ask Varel, I mean, uh, Seven Serpents, about this picture and all the, uh, the uh, planetary symbols pointing to, like, different, I guess, chakras. And there's points in the hips and points in the knees and ankles. What the heck is that? <laughs> and then the arms are supposed to uh, give a willow shape. I don't know. Is there any validity to this, is what I'm wondering. Seagrin, the spiritual victory, the doubled left arm, gathers in energy in the Manipura chakra and projects it like a ray of the black sun with the right arm extended. Its mantra is Heil. Magic salute of the warriors of Wotan. So, I don't know. Let me know. Um, here is the Rune Zodiac. Secret platform against the extraterrestrial enemy, the Demi. It's so funny that they say extraterrestrial in here. It reminds me of the. Uh, Certain, huh? Yeah, no, certain, uh, certain rabbi in, in Israel said they're extraterrestrials, like from another galaxy, but actually more from another dimension, he says, come to Earth on a mission to uh, basically take it over. Um... Yeah, the diabolical concentrating cosmos of the Demiurge, the Lord of Darkness. But I could have sworn the Demiurge concept was from Gnosticism, which is created by the tribe, which is subversive. So, why use concepts of the Demiurge here? I'm not, or unless that's Greek, I don't know. Not sure. Uh, and then they associate Thor with the Thurs rune. That's not so accurate in my in my understanding. Uh, Kabbalah, the J Kabbalah. Similarity to the name of the name of the German Kala and Kalan Darin. Blah blah blah. And so they mention. Uh, let's see. Jewish Kabbalah consists of three books, the Sefer Yezira, Book of Numbers, Letters, the second book, uh, Bahir, referring to abundance in the world tree, the third and last is the Zohar, Book of Splendor. Okay. Weird stuff. Hmm. The Zohar appeared among Sephardic Spanish after they had already destroyed the kingdom of the, uh, I didn't say it, of the Visigoths in Spain. Um, Hagal again, okay, there was something here. Something. Trudvang, Trudvang, mansion of the god Donar Thor, the worlds of home, oak, okay, so. Five, uh, etc. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Asgard, Thursheim, Nibelheim, Muspelheim, Midgard. Yeah, they're at different points of the uh, Hagal, of that form of the Hagal room. 
Mm. And then it mentions God Krishna again. Mm. What? Why? This book just seems like a mix up of all kinds of crazy stuff. Confusion of stuff. Um, Ermin, Yerman, Armin, and Herman, Arminius. The Yerman Sewell, Yerman Sewell. And then down, there's the three norms, the three rights. The number three is powerful. The trilogy, the triad of gods and things. Yeah, there's lots of trilogies, I mean, uh, uh, trinities, not trilogies, trinities in, in various Indo-European traditions. Hmm. Uh, yeah, just a second. I think the end. Oh, the fear, breathe your own luck and have it. Hear your own, think of the end. I don't know, it's just strange stuff that I don't, I don't understand half of it, like what it has to do with, um, other stuff, like other things, practical or magical or otherwise. Uh, now, do not oppose your destiny, give it a meaning. Ragnarok, Twilight of the Asia Gods. The sound of the terrible horn led to the consternation of in Asgard. Because the Divyas remember the eternal return and know everything will repeat as a destiny impossible to escape. To Rook, a circle closes, a melancholy dimming of the light signals the entrance of a sadhya, followed by a sun day I don't know how to say that. Sandhya. Is that is that a Sanatana Dharma concept, or is that some Buddha stuff? If it's Buddha, that's freaking subversion, as far as I'm concerned. The, the divine know they are going to die without dying. They will fall into dream among the polar glaciers. Ravens will tend them. That sounds like what, uh... Oh, what's his name? Uh, Stefan was talking about. Gods didn't actually die in Ragnarok. Um, first Hyperborea was located beyond the Demiurgic Cosmos in the Cycle of Cycles. The second Hyperborea, the Satya Yuga, the Dwapara Yuga, has no place on the physical earth as we know it today. Nor the Golden Age, nor the Silver. Only the Shreta Yuga, the Bronze Age, happened here with the avatars of Rama and Krishna and with the race... <laughs> oh yeah, this is the weird part. Race mixing of the Divine Aesir, Vanir, and Semi-Divine. When we speak of extraterrestrials, we do not mean, of course, what is believed today under J. Tutelage. The Aesir, Tuatha, De Danan, Nephilim, those who come from the other stars, did not arrive in the spaceships or similar bit. So they're mixing up Abrahamic mythology with ours. Now what the hell? No doubt they came from afar, or it may be from within, but they did not avail themselves of such crude, strange means. They did not need flying saucers. The simultaneity of consciousness was enough, absorbing the substance of each plane and clothing themselves with them. In truth, they came from a universe that, even though very far away, uh, is found on the other side of our senses, quote-unquote. And if we see them as if they are round, uh, were round, like disks of light, this is because we do not possess the organ which would permit us to penetrate and see deeply into that other side of our senses. If we could do so, we would also discover 
within that quote unquote disc, a man and a woman, he and she, with forms like those of the Viras. In fact, Wotan and Frigg, Baldr and Induna instead of Iduna, Ivris and Aloina are the extraterrestrial discs of light. Quetzalcoatl, Bokina, and Viracocha are as well. <laughs> okay. I mean, apparently Quetzalcoatl is described as very tall, blonde, and blue-eyed. But, uh, We repeat, the Demiurge Jehovah continues descending through planes of lesser intensity of energy in expiration and breeding where not even his hierarchies of slaves have yet come, but where they create the means for Jehovah's work, investigations, his machines and robots, even though he always shapes them into his own image. When they arrive here, the Hyperborean Divyas must have thought it would be only, or I'm sorry, must have thought it would only be for a very short time. They would be able to resist even if after the Golden Age. But some of them mixed with the quote-unquote daughters of men with the animal men, falling prisoners. What? <laughs> what the hell is this guy talking about? Abrahamic Old, Old Testament crap. The sons of this first uh, racial sin were the heroes of those vanished times, the semi-divine er Aryans, the Viras, who were still able to return to the divine world, transmuting themselves in reverse by means of the initiation of Amor. By having lived directly the experience of this plane of demiurgic impregnation, they could go beyond the gods themselves and be more than they to escape and go out into a dream, dreamed, undreamed rather, even by the greatest pilgrims of nostalgia. What the hell? And then it mentions Atlantis, like the slaves of Atlantis. <clears throat> oh, strangest freaking crap. It's a total mix-up of, of our enemy's story and our story. Because their, their story is from the opposite perspective. And they're trying to meld it together as if it's just the same. What the hell? Doesn't, doesn't work right to me. Um, why did I put this on here? Oh, the Ron again. It is also referred to a very ancient time already gone. Edic songs that have reached us. Or the new Edda, recompiled by the, an Icelandic legislator in the same uh, 13th century as Wolfram von Eschenbach. Walter von der Vogelweide and the warrior troubadour Bertrand de Born. He was the scald Snorris Sturlis and not Sturlis who lived in Iceland in the shadow of volcanoes in Reykjavik. But his Edda was not the ancient saga, though he conserved the mini. I believe that's memory, right? Icelandic word uh, meaning nostalgia, memory, yeah, memory. Just like the mini of the German Mi Minnesanger. So these guys, uh, 55 Club wrote another book based on Serrano stuff, and they kept talking about uh, this, this mystical dream freaking journey thing, and the Minnesanger, and the... Uh, what is it? What is it? Is it? Oh. The goblet, not the goblet or cup, but the shot. No, the freaking gosh darn it! Oh, bunch of mystical le uh, legends and stuff. Physical attributes of Aryan Hyperborean race are not unknown to us today. Perhaps those set for oh, and here he mentions freaking Buddha. What the heck? Why Buddha? Might give us some remote idea today. No. <laughs> In the Mazhima Nikayo, Nikayo, thirty-two attributes to the uh, uh, of the Aryan race are enumerated, 
Two meters tall, chin and chest of a lion, shoulder straight and well formed. The height of, of the body corresponds to the open arms. Okay. Uh, it mentions Atlantis, repeatedly flooded in the eternal return within a circular spiral time. Alright. So it's the Nietzsche's eternal return stuff. Um, Thomas Aquinas, I can read that if you wish. Oh, here's another weird ass thing. Uh, the gavel, gavel or whatever the hell, uh, is where we find the runic key to the inspirations of the half-timbered houses. He unlocks the door to interpreting the truths that conceal themselves in Aryan art and in our legends. Those, these stories are so much older than Christianity. Yeah, because they stole so much from us. But then he says, Christ, the sun is akin to tear. What? No. Mary is our lady. Or Freya, I would say Freya. Uh, and Joseph is an incarnation of the gate. Gabriel, of the great Gabriel. Who? <laughs> That's freaking Hebrew in this guy. He is the old man in the flesh, the chief justice and protector of the Lord. He is Wotan. Um, what? That's just bizarre, syncretic, freaking gobbledygook. Once poor Christians realized that this Gabriel has always been with us and that we know their God better than they do, then shucking off a dead Judeo Christianity is made simple. It can be accomplished without all the petty hate, guilt, and double minded confusion. Uh, we must come to terms with the fact that Christianity has been imbued in us for the last 1500 years. To think ridding it from our psyche is just a matter of taking out the trash, is the silliest thinking. Uh, our solution is going backwards a thousand years as if nothing has happened. I kind of disagree. But that reveals the mindset of why he's, why the authors are syncretizing Christian stuff, Abrahamic stuff with our traditions. So that was the book. Hail to those who have listened. Uh, let me know what you think of this crazy, confusing book. <laughs> um, is that it? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah, there's a little bit more on Guido Fon List. Um, it just talks about Guido Fon List and when he was born and where he was born, Roman Catholic or to a Roman Catholic family, which I was, well, my, my parents became Roman Catholic when I was around five, so almost the same thing. His grandfather had served as a commander in the defense of Vienna from the anti-royalist revolution of the same year. Anti-royalist revolution, all right. And when he was just a boy visiting the ancient catacombs under the Cathedral of St. Stephen's, he declared that one day he would build a temple to Wotan. And did he ever? Yeah, um, metaphorical one, I suppose. But by the turn of the century, the well-respected Meisterlist had uh, quite the following, and in the tradition of an arm man, it was a fantastically wide range of folk. The List Society was formed by these admirers, Lance von Liebenfeld being one example. Why even Nit Nittel von Warnsdorf, the Catholic Bishop of Bohemia, came to visit on the day of the Epiphany with the encouraging words of a new epoch in the history of religion. What? Alright. Meister List's right hand man was the Royal Prussian officer. Bernhard Trudner. It, it was he who collaborated with List on all of the old coat of arms research. Trudner uh, 
Fritsch and Stauff were essential in the founding of the Germanen Orden. The Germanen Orden was made up of members from the High Armen's Order, which was the inner circle of the List Society. And then it makes some connections there. Oh, oh yeah. Continue. From the Germanen Orden sprouted the Thule or Tula Society, the Tula Gesellschaft. And from the Tula Society came the original NSDAP. The rest, as they say, is history. So that's pretty cool. Up until now, much too little attention has been paid to the script of our Germanic ancestors, the runes. This is because everyone has begun from the false baseless assumption that the Germanic peoples had no script of any kind, and that even the writing signs, the runes, had been imperfectly patterned after the Latin uncial script. All this in spite of the fact that Julius Caesar clearly reported on the ancient or on the account books of the uh, Helvetian, not Helvetier, and their writing, which was supposed to be comparable to the Greek script. Without attempting to give evidence here of the great antiquity of the runes, which have doubtlessly found, uh, been found on bronze artifacts and pottery shards. It must be mentioned at this time that the runic futhark, the designation futhark, is based on the first seven runes. It is for this reason that the proper name is futhark. As it, as it is generally the, and incorrectly written, but futhark with an H. Oh, it is not? Maybe it's not. It is not futhark. Oh yeah, my finger's covering part of it. The, the primal language of the Aryan Germanic people and their mystery language it consisted of 16 symbols and ancient Actually, it's more than that, I'm pretty sure. Based on the Bronze Age. It's either Bronze Age or Iron Age um, runic symbols. I saw it on... Saw, found pictures of it on uh, the internet and then later, like I try to look for it again and I can't find it. Uh, this is the same thing. Um, what was here? Daniel Gabriel, Master of Dreams, Helper of the Just Daniel. Why is he mixing that nonsense up? And then he talks about Morning Prince, Morning Star, Christ himself. What? Believe it, kinsman, Lucifer is God. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the light bearer, sure. That Lu Lucem Ferre Lucifer was Latin. It was a Latin concept. Uh, Christ is the resurrection of Lucifer, just as the Horus is the resurrection of Osiris. Krishna to Vishnu. Kuhlin to Lu Lamphada, and as Balder in Wotan. Who will reign after the twilight of the gods? Uh, okay, let's say we take that at face value. Then why do we need to talk about fucking this freaking garbage Christ stuff? Lucifer is an Aryan name. It has no place in the history of the uh, Hyksos. Lucifer and Satan are not the same being. In fact, they are quite the opposite. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. It is very important to learn that Lucifer has nothing to do with the satanic cult. The cult is supplied and ran by the CIA, and folks really need to know this because the cult believes that when martial law takes place in America, it is they who will have a free hand to, t to take out resistors. And then he goes on this crazy stuff that we're going to... We're going to have more in common with gun-toting Christian nationalists. The nutjob freaking Q-tards. <laughs> Rather than these degenerates who sometimes call themselves pig, I would say Palladian. Lucifer is the Aryan god, the great deus pater, Potter. Potter is Indo-European for father. This goober. The mighty Jove and his ax axis, his hammer. That when swung makes all things anew. He is the all powerful Ermin, Ermin Sul, the, the true God uh, who is too mighty to name. 
It is said in all holy books that the gods first brought consciousness, that is the light, therefore the light bringer is the first and he shall be the last. The high and holy name, what the heck, and I'm inside. The high and holy name of Lucifer didn't get a bum rap until the so-called Cathar heresy. Joan of Arc was burned as a witch by the English. The French made her a saint. It's all about which side you're on, and our naive little brothers are on the side, are with the Hyksos. Perhaps an even greater lie than the halt in the... No, I can't. Okay. We won't talk about that. <laughs> uh, gave us white... Oh, yeah. <laughs> they gave us white devils, the true god. Yeah, that's an obvious lie and trap. The true is... The truth is we have always had him. He is our guy. We do not need the Hyksos to give us what is already ours. Yeah, our own gods. Our own gods. Dang it. Hagal. Is this the one where it talks about what I wanted to mention? Oh yeah, okay. It is the tree and yet also the seed. Yeah, the seed. The seed within Yggdrasil that turns into the tree. The kernel from which the tree is born. As always, we are speaking of the Aryan tree. She is our mother who envelops us under her blue mantle sky. The Hyksos, as always, have tried to hijack the mother rune in their so-called Star of David. But in the end, they will get only hags and curses. Once again, it is in the Catholic Church where we find a beautifully evolved and preserved Hagel rune in the heraldic sign of the Lil Li, known by most as the Fleur de Lis, the holy symbol of the power and, and the virtue. So here he seems to be talking about the Catholic Church in a positive light, which is just freaking bizarre to me. Uh, like a Stockholm Syndrome level garbage. In this rune is salvation, a racial salvation, because only through racial purity will we eliminate the dro dross elements in our blood. Therefore, opening the door that is now shut to the higher realms. Okay, I guess can't argue with that last part. Um, let's see. So in the middle area, Serrano calls them white traitors. Who? The chiefs that pull the strings compelled, and, <clears throat> and only when we look at the big picture in this way will we really make sense. Well, it really makes sense. Serrano calls them traitors, white traitors. Uh, Yoki names them ra uh, rationalists and identifies their master as a spirit. Serrano takes this step further and says they are bad angels. The Hyksos never stood the chance of his present domination without these traitors. In men we find them in the likes of the Illuminati, Jesuits, Freemasons, Hocus Pocus, Kosher, Magical Circles, etc. These all have sympathy for one another and whether they know it whether they know it does not matter, for they all serve the same master. Loki. In the same manner, we have sympathy for noble souls across the world, such as Iran, for we also serve our chief, thank God. It all comes down to loyalty and the bastards have none, but they all have they all have been well trained, so these pretenders act well polished. But their bottom line is always what's in it for me. Yeah, so he goes on and on. Uh, blah, blah, blah. This is the super force that the scared to death Jesuit speaks of, the imposter of liberty that the Freemasons adore, and the cherub of the kosher Enochian magi magician. He pretends to be like our guy in all facets, for he is brilliant, but he lacks the same things his minions do. Creatively creativity 
a clean soul and a proper understanding. For example, for example, Lucifer has stealth, but heaven speak is a sneak. What? Lucifer has stealth, but heaven spook is a sneak. Um, what the hell? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so that's it, I guess. Uh, so anybody who has ideas on this crazy stuff, let me know. I've had this book for, uh, for, since like, for years, since, uh, before 2020, I don't remember when I got it, but it's been a bit of an enigma, and I go back to it every once in a while, but, uh, it's just strange stuff most of the time. So, that's it. Hail to those who have listened. Um, uh, message what you think, especially Seven Serpents. Um, and Farmed Govinum.